a matter of perspective. Riker is accused of killing a scientist after seducing his wife. The opening itself was very unusual. That music is really unlike anything we've heard before and it really sets the scene in a different way and I liked it. And my favorite part of this whole episode is right at the beginning, when Data is critiquing Picard's art. It really has nothing to do with the rest of the episode, but I was okay with it because it cracked me up. While suggesting the free treatment of form usually attributed to Favism, this quite inappropriately attempts to juxtapose the disparate cubistic styles of Picasso and Leger. Picard doesn't seem like he has enough patience to really become a good artist. And this is the second episode in a row with nudity of some kind, which was also surprising. The Enterprise is going to visit Dr. Apgar, a scientist trying to create Krieger waves, which would be a new source of power. Riker is down on the station already, and during the process of beaming him up, there's a power drain and the station explodes. Riker says Dr. Apgar was the only person aboard, and Data says it looks like there was a reactor core overload. When Picard asks him about it, Riker seems to be hiding something. We've already seen that he will blatantly murder someone if he wants to, So to me, it didn't seem out of the question that he might be involved. An investigator from Dr. Apgar's homeworld shows up to investigate and immediately arrests Riker for suspicion of murder. He says that Riker will be given a chance to prove his innocence, and Picard arrogantly responds, Investigator, in our system of jurisprudence, a man is innocent until proved guilty. Picard's attitude really pissed me off. Without knowing anything about what happened, and having already seen Riker's suspicious behavior in this episode, Picard aggressively and dickishly defends him. The chief investigator says they need to recreate the events point by point, to which Picard counters they can use the holodeck, as opposed to going down to the planet like the investigator wants to. What Data says they'll need in order to do that is a lot. It would require construction and design specifications, full orthographic representations of the Krieger equipment, as well as visual representations and voice analyses of the persons involved. It honestly sounds like it would be easier to just go down to the planet, but Picard has to make this power play, and Data says it took almost 24 hours. The recreations will have a nominal 8.7% margin of error. Which seems like a lot, especially in the matter of someone being murdered. The artificial conflict of this whole situation was really pissing me off. When they get to the holodeck, Picard asks Riker if he has anything to say, and the first thing he does is lie. I'm not a murderer. Riker is the first one to give his version of what happened. His testimony is that Dr. Apgar's wife came on to him and they were caught by Dr. Apgar. Apgar is played by Mark Margolis, who I knew from Breaking Bad and a bunch of Darren Aronofsky movies. His hair reminded me of Kane from the House of Mystery comics. He's worried that Starfleet won't give him the resources he needs based on Riker's report. And the chief investigator reveals that a phaser was fired from Riker's location, which caused the transporter malfunction and the explosion of the station. But I thought the Enterprise could detect when one of the phasers has been fired after the fact by, like, checking the logs of the phaser. When they were talking about that, I thought about the episode where Lore was beamed out while firing his phaser, and that didn't seem to cause any problems. <laughs> Jordi and Data confirm that a phaser-like blast was fired from Riker's position at the stated moment, and then Worf detects a mysterious radiation that damages part of the ship. Mrs. Apgar's deposition is next. Her version is that Riker is strong-arming everybody and using his position to influence how his report on Dr. Apgar's work will read. I immediately assumed that she was telling the truth because it seemed more in character for Riker. And apparently Jonathan Frakes can't even throw a punch, so they gotta pull in this stunt double for that. I liked the different versions of the fight because all of them were funny. When Riker is getting grabby with Mrs. Apgar, couldn't Troy tell by the reactions of the real people in the room whether Riker or Mrs. Apgar was telling the truth? Afterward, Troy says, It is the truth, as each of you remembers it. And I get that people's memories are not perfect, but this is literally the opposite things happening from each other. It didn't seem plausible that they would each be able to actually believe that that's how it happened. Meanwhile, the strange radiation is burning new holes in the ship, and Data thinks it might have something to do with the exploding station, but they need more evidence. They determine that the radiation bursts are coming at consistent intervals. Dr. Apgar's assistant's deposition is next. 
which is dumb. Inspector, this is hearsay. She wasn't a witness to this incident. But they try and gloss over that plot hole by saying it's a violation of their just system, which is stupid. Personally, I like this version of the fight the best. I'm not the fool you take me for. And then the stupidity is compounded when the assistant says, The next day when I heard the station had exploded, I knew what had happened. He'd killed Dr. Apgar. This planet's justice system was created only to make the plot work, otherwise they would have quickly written themselves into a logical corner. Data, Wesley, and Jordy figure out that the lambda field generator on the planet used by Apgar is emitting energy pulses at the same intervals as the radiation. But instead of coming right out and explaining, we get an uber dramatic commercial break. We now know what is causing the bursts and why the science station exploded, sir. And we also know who killed Dr. Apgar. When we get back, Picard gives an overly dramatic address to the investigator. Picard reveals that Dr. Apgar had already created Krieger waves and was lying to the crew. And, <sighs> so stupid. There are actual Krieger waves being created by the holodeck since the holodeck is a recreation of his lab, which opens up so many questions that I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> then Riker says, But the holodeck can't create anything dangerous. What about all the other things that have happened in this entire show so far? Did you see how fast that snowball was flying? Uh, assistance as soon as it... Ah. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Then the crew makes a bunch of assumptions, which we as the audience are supposed to assume are true, and they might be true, but it's still just hypothesizing all over the place. They finally end up recreating the moment of the explosion, and I'm surprised they didn't all die from it. I like how when the demonstration was over, the table and chairs are still there. Does that mean someone had to drag that shit into that room? <laughs> And then they leave without determining whether Riker was hitting on Mrs. Apgar or not. An unresolved plotline that didn't go anywhere. I liked how the chief inspector said, Based on this new evidence, I withdraw my request for Commander Riker's extradition. Which also seems like a lazy way to just send the crew on their way, but it must be part of their justice system that if a case goes on for longer than 45 minutes, all defendants are automatically absolved. A matter of perspective. Overall, I like the basic idea of using the holodeck to portray different characters' versions of previous events, and the overall mystery itself was fine, but every single character kept saying and doing stupid things, both in real life and in the recreations, and most of the perspective stuff didn't end up mattering. I would give it a C-. I mean, this one wasn't super good, so I assumed you would give it a super high rating, since you gave Deja Q a f***ing A. I give it a B plus. I give this one a D plus. There's no real difference between creating everything on the holodeck versus getting traditional testimony. It's only done in the episode, so Picard can dick measure against the chief investigator, and it's done by the producers to be cool. And recreating everything visually with characters showing emotions does exactly what I would have expected it to do and creates a ton of bias, since whoever is making the deposition can make the other characters as likable or unlikable as they want, which is exactly what everybody does. The writing was lazy, using another planet's justice system as an excuse to create, quote, legitimate plot holes. Not to mention that the holodeck actually creating and sending out real-life Krieger waves to other parts of the ship was ridiculous. This one could have been good if many things were different, <laughs> but it wasn't that good. 